Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a very quick project in Reaper. I have heard from people who say Reaper is a very hard to use program, and I really don't understand why that is. So I'm going to just show you some of the basics of getting your audio interface set up and then creating tracks and then saving. Um, again, I'm puzzled as to why he will say this, but you know, if I can help anybody out there with Reaper, then here we go. So first of all, if your audio device is not set up yet, it will pop up with a screen saying you need to set your device up. But right now I need to go to options and then preferences or press control P. And then I need to go up to audio device. And right now I am set up on my computer's default sound card. And everything is set up okay. You have a variety of options. Um, I could do ASIO with my Fast Track Ultra device or ASIO for all, but I can't do that now because I'm recording. Uh, but that's how you do this. So I have it on direct sound, 24 bit two input channels. That's my sample rate for my sound card. And I'm not sure if it even goes past that. I think that's the default. And then I have my buffer set really high because it's a built-in sound card. So I'm gonna cancel this. And now here's how you set up tracks. Really simple. On the keyboard, Control T. Adds a new track, or you have the option under the track menu, we can do Insert track from template, insert new track, same thing as control T, or there's an option to insert a bunch of tracks, which is actually over here, I believe. Yeah, here we go, multiple tracks under the insert menu. And I want, I don't know, eight tracks. And let's call them Real Home Recording. Just for fun, even though that name is ridiculously huge. But there we go. Now, the last step. See, we're on this meter. Click it. And I can set mono left, right, or stereo, or MIDI. I'm just going to do MIDI because I don't know if it's going to mess with my audio recording if I do anything to it. But here we go. I'll hit all channels. And then last step. Actually, second to the last step. Up here where it says record arm, click that. And then the last step is control R or click this button down here. It's that simple. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the deal is with people saying Reaper's complicated. It's not complicated at all. I'm going to hit space to stop this recording now. Obviously, I didn't do anything. But it gives you the option right away. And I love this feature because a lot of times when you're recording, you mess up. And, you know, if you keep recording bad takes, it just eats up hard drive space unnecessarily. So if I double, if I hit space twice really fast, it automatically saves this file. And then I can go to file, save project as. And then now I gotta censor this because it's a uh, <laughs> it's a project that needs to be kept under wraps. But I can just save this as I don't know MIDI RHR. And then I have a variety of options down here. This one, a lot of times I'll use this if I if I forgot to save the project before I started recording move all media into project directory and then uh, you hit save that's it really really easy i don't understand why people think reaper is complicated it's not it's to me one of the easiest dolls in the world to use and it, it just works great so there we have it if if you've ever had problems with reaper or you want to get into reaper there you go and reaper can be downloaded from reaper.fm they have a 30-day trial and it's pretty much the cheapest 
digital audio workstation software you can buy. I mean, it's 60 bucks, and you get two major release versions. I don't think any other company offers that. And they constantly put updates out. I can't say enough of good things about Reaper. So this has been Adam for RealHomeRecording.com.